stay tuned for Air Gun Detectives. Welcome to another episode of Air Gun Detectives. Today we're going to take the mystery out of the Hammerley 850 Air Magnum and this one is in .22 caliber. Before we get started though, do me a favor, hit that little subscribe button down there below. Um, it doesn't cost you anything, it's absolutely free, but it means a lot to the channel. Anyway, if you'd like to be notified of the new videos that are coming out, please hit that little bell right there. And thumbs up are always great. We'd love to see your feedback and your comments. I appreciate it. And I try to get back to pretty much everybody that puts a comment on there. It takes some time, but we try to do that. All right, let's talk about the gun on hand here. All right, this is our Hammerley 850 Air Magnum. Numerex is no longer doing the Hammerley, but they have came out with the Umarex 850M2. It's identical. The only thing they did is change the gun up a little bit. In fact, um, see these little Picatinny rails here on the side? I actually put those on there and I put that on the bottom. The M2s come with that. So I actually did this on my own, but the new M2s actually come with that already installed. So they pretty much upgraded. Other than that, it's pretty much exactly the same rifle. The same barrel, same mechanism, the whole thing. And if this looks familiar to you, they make a PCP rifle, Walther does, and it's called the Dominator. It's same barrel, same mechanism here, same trigger, same stock. The only thing they do is they put a little heavier hammer spring in it. Instead of a CO2 valve in here, they do a, a PCP tube, pre-charged pneumatic tube in here. And so you could actually convert one of these into a PCP if you wanted to. But anyway, so they're re-releasing that as the Umarex 850 M2. So you're going to see that anytime, but it's pretty much identical to this. So the features are exactly the same. Performance is pretty much exactly the same. Um, just the cosmetic, like I said, with the pic Picatinny rails. Okay, so this one comes, this is a, this one is powered by uh, CO2, and it did not come with this rail or this little uh, bipod. I put that on there. You know me, I'm a big bipod guy. But this pops off here. Your 90 gram or 88 gram CO2, whichever one you want, screws right into here, valves in here. So it's set up that way. Now, if you are like me and sometimes you don't have time to go through, you know, a giant CO2 container, like a 90 grammer, you can use two 12 gram CO2s. And Umarax has this adapter out here. This adapter is great. It takes two, you just open this thing up. And the good thing about this is you can take it actually in and out. But you just put two CO2s in there. You put one in this direction and then one in this direction. And then you screw them in just like this. And then you tighten this up. It releases the air in the chamber and then you're good. You can actually screw this in. You could actually unscrew it too. But you get, you know, I get probably close to 60 shots out of the two CO2s, which is kind of nice. Another little hint on this. Sometimes there's issue piercing some of the CO2s depending on the brands that you need. So when you put a CO2 in, just take a little dime, just a regular dime, drop it in there in between them, and it creates just enough space where you don't have to overly put too much pressure on this to pierce the CO2s. But that works really well. So just keep that in mind. The other thing is, if you only want to shoot about 15, 20 shots, check this out. All you have to do is put in one live CO2, doesn't matter which one, you put in one live one and you put in one already pierced one, a used one. You drop that in there and now you'll get 15, 20 shots if you're just going to shoot, you know, half that amount. So you have lots of options there. So that's why this is a great accessory and it will pay for itself in time. Alright, so this is powered by CO2. Um, they're claiming you can get maybe up to 200 shots on it. We'll, we'll test that and I'll, I'll give you some feedback at the end. This has an 8-shot uh, magazine. They're really nice magazines, really easy to load. This whole thing is German made. This is a German quality gun. And uh, it's, pull the bol it's bolt action, a little lock there, and the magazine just slides right on in just like that. Now, this gun, it can be de decocked. All you do is hold on to the bolt, slide it forward, and it's decocked. So, and it does have, this has an automatic safety here, so every time you pull the bolt back, that the safety is engaged. But we're gonna talk a little bit about this at the end. So yes, yeah, so every shot, 
you pull back and then the safety is engaged. So you have, it's got a double, um, so you push this in, um, I don't know if you can see this, but it has a double little safety where you got to push that little teeny button in there with your finger and then it slides forward. But it's not bad, it's manageable. It comes with fiber optic sights, you've got the green in the back, and the, the adjustment on this is kind of funny. So the elevation is set on this little ramp here where you can slide this up or down and then adjust it there. Now, your windage, that's on the front sight here. You can actually move this right and left and that will do your windage if you want to do open sights. And then it does have the 11 millimeter um, dovetail right here and we're going to put a scope on it later for our shooting. We'll show you how that performs. Anyway, the overall gun's about 41 inches long. It's got about a 23 and a half inch barrel and uh, weighs about 5.8 pounds. So it's a, it's a pretty neat little package. Now these were running over close right around you get them I think I paid I paid less than that but they're running right around 300 bucks and that's what the new M2s are running right about the same so let's take this out let's um oh anyway think of a little bit more on the stock you kind of have a little ambidextrous the the new stock on the M2s almost identical slight slight cosmetic differences but other than that it's pretty much the same gun so let's, uh, let's go out and test this thing, see how well it performs, and then we're going to come back and talk about it. But stay tuned, because I have a lot of information on this gun that you're probably not going to find in many places that might surprise you. So let's move on to the next segment. So we're going to go ahead and test the velocity on our Hammerly 850. Before I start shooting now, I want you to look at this clip. This was the first time that I was running this thing through a chronograph. And uh, just take a look at this for a second. All right, let's test our Hammerly out here, 850 for velocity. Okay, we're just going to be shooting the 11.9 grain RWS hobby pellets. They're actually one of the most accurate pellets in this rifle. So let's shoot five shots over the crony, and uh, we'll see what type of velocity we get. Okay, shot number one. 549, kind of weak. Shot number two. 554, shot number three, 555, shot number four, 544, let's do one more, 559. All right, there's your average. Um, not too impressed. It's almost 100 feet per second uh, less than what they're claiming this gets. Okay. Now, I'm going to run it through the chronograph now. I did some updates to this thing, and uh, I thought there was a lot of problems with it, but there actually wasn't. But I did do quite a few fixes on this, and they're very simple, and you can do them yourself. But I want to show you what the velocity is now, and then during our conclusion, we're going to talk about what I did to this gun. Okay, so, shot number one. 735. Shot number two. 707. Shot number three. 702. Shot number four. 703. And let's do one more shot. 698. All right, there's your average feet per second. We're shooting the RWS um, hobbies. They're 11.9 grains. So let's move on to the next segment. All right, let's test our uh, 850 here on accuracy. We're our usual 20 yards back. Go ahead and take a look. We're gonna go ahead and shoot some Predator GTOs in this. Um, they're 11.75 grain pellet. They're a non-lead pellet, just for something different. Um, it actually shoots those quite well. Shoots a Meisterkrugen 14.0 grains really good. And I've had a lot of luck, believe it, just with the basic hobbies, the 11.9 RWS hobby pellets. They shoot really well. This is not overly pellet picky. You can pretty much put any 22 caliber pellet in this thing, and you're going to be surprised at the results. So let's go ahead and shoot five shots. We'll see what type of grouping we get, and uh, we'll go from there. All right. Here's one.
and two. And three. Four. And one more. And five. Not a bad group. I've done a little better off camera, but actually for shooting live, not too shabby. So Anyway, let's move on to the next segment. All right, let's test our 850 here and uh, see what type of pull weight we get on the trigger. All right. One pound, 4.8 ounces. Not a bad trigger at all. I cheated though. I did add a screw to that, but I'm gonna show you at the end of this video in the conclusion how you can make your trigger just like that and it's really really simple all right let's move on to the next segment it's getting my favorite part of the review the plinking let's see how our 850 does at 40 yards take a look at what we're going to be shooting at up here yeah we got a zombie creature there to start out with and we got some real small objects up on top there a little shotgun shell a little bottle on its side once again our little red eggs but we're going to go ahead and shoot the predator gto's the um we're the 11.75 grain pellet. And uh, let's see what we can do, how well we can do it at 40 yards. There's a little bit of a breeze today, so I'm not making any promises. All right. Start with our little zombie. Say so that's a hit. And let's go up on top. What do we got up on top? How about that little glass bottle at the end? That was a two foot. Uh, shotgun shell in the middle there. Red egg to the left. Ram to the right. And that's it. Wow. That was pretty effortless. 40 yards with a little gust of wind. <laughs> Not too shabby. All right, let's go wrap this thing up. Okay, now in our conclusion here with our uh, Hamley 850. And just remember, this is just being rebranded. Umarex is just coming out. It's going to be the 850 M2. Same gun. But you guys saw that I was very concerned on the first chronograph test that this was underpowered and it bothered me. So what I did behind the scenes is uh, I did some research and I was thinking that the... Um, CO2 valve wouldn't get enough pressure on it. So I was thinking it was being underpowered because I was averaging 552 feet per second and that was just under a 12 grain um, lead pellet. So I'm like, hmm, maybe there's problems with this valve. So I started doing some research and people were saying, oh, well, you can get the, uh, the Walther Dominator, which is the PCP version of this. You can get their spring and their spring guide and you can buy that and put that in there and trim the spring and do this and do that. And I said, you know what, I'm just going to tear this thing apart. So I opened up the trigger assembly. First of all, there's just four screws there. And then you have the um, magazine guide that there's one little screw there. I kind of like to leave that one in there just to make sure that that magazine guide rod is pulled back. And then you got to take the bolt loose. The bolt's just a six millimeter um, wrench and you undo that. But anyway, so it's the four screws. Then you very carefully pick the cover up. And this is what's on the inside. So I started looking at that and I go, maybe we just need a little bit more spring tension. And that might do the trick. So, you know what I did? I took a pen and I cut off exactly 5.08 millimeters, which would be roughly 2 tenths of an inch, 0 0.20 of an inch, 2 tenths of an inch. Very small piece looks just like this if you can see it but you can see it in, in the assembly up there I put it right up there in the assembly so what it I had to find something that slid onto the the spring guide nice and tightly so this would slide onto the spring guide itself and then the spring on top of that 
So then what it does, it just creates just that, just that teeny little bit more pressure. Not much. It doesn't take much, that's all. So while I was in there and I took that apart, the other thing that bugs me is this automatic safety. So every time you pull the bolt back, this thing locked and then you have to, it's a double safety where you have to push the center portion. I said, there's gotta be a way to eliminate that. I'm an adult. I don't need a gun telling me when to put it on safe. I can do a manual safety and do it myself. There's not a problem with that. So this is what the, the safety is like in the assembly. And this, look, this is what it looks like out of the assembly. You see the knob on the top? All you do is cut that off. I put that on the grinder literally within 30 seconds. I just ground it smooth, put it back in, and now the automatic safety is gone. It still completely works. It's just a manual safety now. In addition to that, while I'm in there, I'm like, hmm, I wonder what I can do with this trigger. And I've looked at different people talking about drilling the housing in the bottom and adding a screw here and doing that. And I said, let me just replace the trigger screw that's there. So if you get yourself in a metric three dash 0.5 by an eight millimeter, you can actually just replace the trigger screw that's right in here. And you'll still be able to adjust it right from the gun, you know, when it's assembled. And it's amazing. You saw. It brought my trigger down to just barely over a pound. And it was one pound, four ounces, something like that when we tested it. But it, it takes up the big creep in the front of it. I mean, it's fantastic. Turns it into just a terrific trigger. So we did all that. We got rid of the manual safety. We then added that little piece of ballpoint pen casing to the spring um, guide rod. And we did the trigger. We did all that for what the price of a screw it was like next to nothing so now we gained 150 plus feet per second on this rifle so now as you saw when we chroned it we're averaging almost 710 feet per second that was the average so that means we're averaging about 13 foot pounds which realistically you know is going to be a little higher a little lower so we're averaging 13 foot pounds so insane so we really, really cleaned this gun up just by doing just a few little things. Um, and, and you know what's so funny is they're just such basic modifications. Um, now, you do have to be somewhat savvy to take that trigger housing apart so you don't mix up all the parts. But if you're smart, you can just come back to this video. You can freeze frame those photos, and there's your whole insides right there. And actually, I was in and out of that making little adjustments probably a minimum of 10 times. I got to the point where I knew where every piece went. I could take all the pieces out and drop them all back in. It's actually a very, very simple setup, um, but it works, it works really, really well. So anyway, then we look at the performance of this gun and it was amazing. We got less than a quarter of an inch. Did you see when we were doing the accuracy, I don't know if you're overly paying attention, Four of the five pellets went through the exact same hole. We had one that slightly veered off, could have been me, but uh, and that's what brought our uh, group out to just under a quarter of an inch. But the four out of five were dead center, all four through the same hole. You go back and look at that. Um, at plinking, oh my God, at uh, the 40 yards, we were hitting anything we wanted, the smallest little objects. So. This gun is a blast, and it really, really is so much more fun to shoot when you don't have to take the safety on and off between every shot. Like I said, we're adults. We know when to turn our safeties on and when to take them off, so we'll go from there. So overall, this gun is really neat. And I like the fact that when the new M2 is coming out, that they already have some accessory rails on the side, and they already come with a rail on the bottom so you can set it up with a bipod. I did that myself before they even had that type of thing put together so oh well so it worked out quite well other than that I'm trying to think of anything additional but overall this is a good gun I'm gonna have to give it um, five stars because it's German made just with that little upgrade now if you got to do that little upgrade that's what makes it five stars but it didn't cost anything it was just a little bit of time a little bit of effort but this gun is so much fun to shoot. And then obviously I put a scope on it, and with accuracy like this, it deserves it. But you know the good thing about um, shooting CO2 rifles, you don't have to worry about any recoil. So you can use your lower end scopes on there and they work absolutely fine. They work really, really well. And then you can also, and I had at one point, I don't know, um, you might have seen it in part of the videos, I did have a compensator on this, but the thing kind of blew apart. 
So I got rid of it and just went back to the standard sights on it. The gun's not overly loud. It is backyard friendly. Um, they do sell, they sell a compensator for it, but you can get aftermarket compensators just based on the diameter of the barrel and uh, that'll go on there. Also, we're getting, we're going to talk about shots. Okay, with my modifications with the 700 plus feet per second, because there's just a little bit more pressure on that spring, I'm getting about anywhere depending on the weather, uh, probably a, close to 180 shots with the full 90 gram CO2. Now with the um, adapter, which I highly recommend these adapters if you don't want to be using 90 gram, you're still going to get close to 60 shots out of this, 50 to 60 shots with two CO2s. And then as a trick, I told you, drop an empty one in there, use a full one, and you'll still get another 25 or 30 shots. So let's say you just want to go out and shoot 25 or 30 shots. Drop an empty CO2 in there, drop a full CO2 in there, you're good to go. So you get the same velocity, um, regardless if you use the 90 gram or you use this, the velocity is identical. The CO2 is a liquid and it's roughly around an 800 PSI pressure. A temperature can affect it a little bit, but it's still right around an 800 PSI pressure. So when the liquid's gone, the pressure's gone. And so it doesn't really matter if it's a large one or smaller one. The gun performs exactly the same with either. So with that, I want to thank you again for tuning in to Air Gun Detectives. Uh, appreciate your feedback. If you have a chance, please subscribe. I really appreciate that. It really helps out the channel. And I hope everybody is being safe and healthy. And once again, I just can't wait till we get past this and everybody can get back to work. We can get our lives going at normal. But until then, stay tuned for Air Gun Detectives. Don't forget, this is where we take the mystery out of the air gun. And until next time, appreciate you tuning in.